Yeah, there totally is a pupper, huh? I'm gonna turn down the music in a second. So the dog that was on screen, because he just got up and walked away, that was Puck. And my dogs have, for better or worse, learned that they get more Cheerios by not being on camera. He knows to make the Cheerios fly once I start talking to get up from his spot. Up, oh, up, oh, there's Tanner. So for those of you that are new, this is how, you know, A, we get the dogs on camera, and B, to get them quiet, and B, say, or, and C, say thank you. So here's the Cheerios. Hey, Puck, can you speak? Puck, that was weak. Try again. Speak. All right, Puck says thank you. I say thank you. Here are the Cheerios, and make it rain. So there, I pulled out his brandy new dog bed and he was laying quietly on it until I started speaking. Yeah, it's okay. There's, I feel like it's a lost cause at this point and that I just need to, um, I honestly just need to sit and talk to my computer more with all my lights on to, in order to desensitize them. So, and my Cheerios are almost low. So, for those of you that are like, why are we here? Uh, we're going to do a behind the scenes stream because why not? Um, I don't think Dr. Pamela had any streams scheduled for tonight anyways, and I need to do daily space and I need some help with stuff. So crowdsourcing and you know, I kind of want to show you guys what goes into putting an episode together, but first I need to reach for more Cheerios which are up over here. They will get blue screened out, green screened out. And then Tinker will show very, Tinker will be very interested in the Cheerios. So and then we put the Cheerios back up. So in true behind the scenes fashion, oh wow, he's really dig digging under that bed. So I mentioned before that I, I think I mentioned last night that I wear makeup for stream, and I know it doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup. Hey, Jandra! I know it doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup right now. I still do have... Um, I still do have some makeup on from earlier when I streamed. And I will totally hit you up, Tanner, after stream. I don't know what happens. My instructions for showing off moon mappers earlier was... Low hanging fruit, talk about moon mappers because it's live. And I am directing everybody that's playing around with moon mappers to log all of your bugs in Discord because Tanner and I will both be able to see them. I say this like I'm working with the code and I'm not, but Tanner will be able to see them. So there's that. So back to makeup and things. Last night I talked about a little about uh, if you're not in the makeup wearing persuasion or essentially if you don't normally wear makeup, things that you should do if you're going to be on camera, and that includes photographs, uh, have these little, um, and it's being green screened out too. These are just little oil absor absorbing sheets and they are, they're blue but they're gonna, oh, they didn't get green screened out. So they're blue. The ones I have are kind of this plasticky thing. And you just take these, and I've already dabbed a lot of oil off my face. You just take these and blot. And I guess if I did it on my neck, I could see, you guys can see what happens more. I guess not. I did a lot of blotting because it's not pulling up any more oil. But it helps make your face less shiny. And eventually it'll go kind of transparent if it collects enough oil. So yeah, but my face is still shiny and we're going to get to that. So I already have mascara on, uh, eyeshadow primer, even though I don't wear eyeshadow primer. And I also have under eye concealer on, which I might touch up. Now nah, we'll leave it alone. But I do have, I do have a blemish, which 
It's probably hard for you guys to see, but unfortunately I can see it and it's bothering me. And it looks like on, it's right here. And on camera, it's just a real small thing. But I have this thing from e.l.f. That is a, it's called Erase and Conceal. Okay, that's fine. So, dab a little of the green stuff, which I know the colors aren't coming true. Dab a little of the green stuff. Green counteracts red. It almost makes it disappear. And that's all I'm going to really bo uh, bore you with as far as like concealer things. And now I'm just gonna put powder, powder on my face and then lip stuff. So this will be quick, I promise. And then we can talk about all the stuff that, actually, while I'm doing this, we can talk about the stuff that we're gonna do tonight. So tonight, I need to make, um... Elf doesn't make your ears long and pointy? No, Elf does not make my ears long and pointy. Elf is very cheap, very cheap starter makeup, as in, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what to buy, you can go and buy things from e.l.f. for under $10, which is actually pretty good. Um, I think a couple of their things that I had purchased were around a dollar. So good cheap makeup to start with, but, and brushes too, they make brushes. This is an e.l.f. brush. Um, good cheap stuff to start with and learn. Essentially, don't be afraid to upgrade to the better stuff as you get better. I used to, um, I used to use like e.l.f. powder, now I use like Maybelline and stuff, which is a bit of an upgrade, but it's still drugstore stuff, which for a lot of you is like, there's makeup other than drugstores? Oh yeah, drugstore counters, or not drugstore counters, but makeup counters. Now there's independent makeup stores. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. But drugstore makeup is known for being cheap. Because there's, I'll show it to you guys as soon as I'm done powdering. And I'm trying to powder as much as I can to get rid of as much shininess as I can because it annoys me. And I'm using both my compact mirror, which you can't see, it's right off screen, and the monitor, and the monitor's not a mirror, which is a little confusing for my brain. I think the first mascara I bought was like $8 and the one I use now is like 26 Yeah. It's a lot. Okay. And now my face is a whole lot less shiny. Except for over here still, for whatever reason. And boom! My, my face isn't as shiny. I could be really nitpicky about it and add on way more product, but it's not as shiny as when we started, she says, as she keeps applying makeup. Look, for those of you that are like, oh my god, why is she doing her makeup? Look, there's a dog on camera. Look at the dog. Aren't you cute? You're cute. All right. So, because I need to dig in this. So for comparison... I can't see how much is in here. It looks like, this one it looks like 0.2 milliliters. This is the, like the $8 one, maybe $10. This one has, maybe it isn't 0.2 milliliters. I really can't tell. This one might have six milliliters in it. I really don't know. This says 10 grams. That's not helpful. It's not helpful, but this is the super expensive one. It's actually Korean. So, I just lost my compact. So lip stuff and my glasses and then we'll be going! And lip stuff, I'm just using tinted lip balm. Yes, there are people that care exactly what products you use. So there. Still doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup. It's still a very natural look. This is how I like it. So, pull out the glasses, pull all that away, 
Anybody that was bored by the makeup stuff, it's over, I promise. All right, but yeah, I do that pretty much before I, every time I stream. So now, now we are, I know, Buck, you're so adorable. Oh, thank you for the bits. Oh, extreme Puck close up. Hey, Puck, can you speak? Come on, speak. 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 Speak louder. All right, Rose, I say thank you. Puck says thank you. Hear the Cheerios and make it rain. But yeah, that's that's all the boring makeup stuff. It's done now, I promise. I promise. Okay, so the things that I still need to do today are, um, what did I say we were doing? I said we were gonna make daily space, update the launch calendar, and more. So daily space is gonna be tricky because sometimes the newest science stuff doesn't come out until the next morning but it takes me much longer to digest some science news stuff than it does for Dr. Pamela. And I'm doing daily space tomorrow, so yeah, there's that. That's, that's not what I wanted to do, computer, but we'll make it work. So yeah, it, it unfortunately does take me much longer to digest space news than Pamela, Dr. Pamela because I have to do things like do I understand really what a blue giant is and what is this about waves coming out through a star what's a supernova things like that things like that that are um, kind of basic to Dr. Pamela but because it's been a while for me aren't so basic so yes I'm glad your heart is melting I think I think, I think we'll be able to have him up on camera as well as all of our other stuff too. Yeah, as Paranor says, Dr. Pamela understands the details that us mere mortals don't e easily don't feel bad. And my general feeling is that if I don't understand it well enough to explain to you guys, like if I don't understand it, there's a good chance you guys don't understand it. So I don't feel entirely bad looking it up. Um, this actually makes me an asset in some teams I've been told simply because I don't always know what people are talking about. So one of the things I am going to need help with aside from there are not enough monitors on my computer. One of the things I am going to need help with is this social media application for actually let's see if I can oh I don't even know where the social media thing is um, so there's a launch in June for the Falcon Heavy let me switch screens so you guys can see what I'm looking at no not that social media thing the other social media thing the other social media thing. I have to go back to uh, Discord to pull up the address. So, this social media thing, this is what I'm talking about. Which, that's, I didn't want to pull up that. Why, why did it flip to Discord? That was bad. Uh, let's try this again. Or is it just gonna... Why? It pulled up Chrome. Okay, that's what the problem was. Okay. It recognizes Discord as Chrome. That's, that's fascinating. So this, this social media thing is what I'm talking about. Um, they are taking... Rose says we can all not understand together. Well, thank you guys. But um, they are taking applications for social media people to go and watch this launch. So this is going to be the space test program too, which we watched one of the missions for that I th think was by Rocket Lab. 
fairly certain we've already watched one of those. Um, so there's going to be multiple NASA technologies, a small satellite. Uh, I guess there's going to be six NOAA. That's uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for the U.S. Weather Research Satellites. Multiple CubeSat missions, including twin CubeSats that will work in tandem with the NOAA Weather Research Satellites. And an Air Force Research Laboratory spacecraft equipped with NASA instruments. So... Essentially, they are going to select a maximum of 55 social media users to attend the two-day event and will be given access similar to news media. So we'll have the opportunity to view a launch of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket and tour the NASA facilities at Kennedy Space Center, speak with representatives from NASA, SpaceX, U.S. Air Force, and NOAA, view and take photographs of the Falcon Heavy rocket at Launch Complex 39 Alpha and meet fellow space enthusiasts who are active on social media. So they've just opened up re registration. I've worked on it. My Myself as an individual, I am not active enough on social media as, you know, binary blaze to be like, pick me, pick me, pick me. But there was some discussion and the discussion essentially was, well, CosmoQuest is active enough. So, yeah, like, see if they have. So here's the thing, they, their criteria, their criteria are essentially, um, the, the fact is essentially, do I need to have a social media account to register? Yes, the event is designed for people who actively use multiple social networking programs platforms and tools to disseminate information to a unique audience, regularly produce new content that features multimedia events, have the potential to reach a large number, number of people using digital platforms, reach a unique audience separate and distinctive from traditional news media and or NASA audiences, must have an established history of posting content on social media platforms, have previous postings that are highly visible, respected, and widely recognized. Users on all social networks are, in are encouraged to use the hashtag um, NASA social. Excuse me. I imagine they would filter for flat earthers paranoia. So I, I am a U.S. citizen and I have two forms of ID. So those are the... Um, main things. Uh, registration closes at May 16th and the registration is only for one person. So, and it's non-transferable. So it's not like I can apply and then transfer it to Pamela. If we both wanted to go, we both would have to apply because Pamela has a strong social media presence of her own, she could probably apply as Star Strider and I would apply as CosmoQuest, which feels weird because to me, in my brain, Dr. Pamela is CosmoQuest. I'm just a teeny tiny part of CosmoQuest. So it's weird. Um, yeah, simply because the registration process that I'm doing right now is only for one person and it can't be transferred. So, hey, Zine! And, um, registration indicates my intent to travel to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida and attend the two-day event in person. I will be responsible for my own expenses for travel, accommodation, food, and other amenities. So, um, I'm trying to think. I can all right so let me put it to you guys this way I've never been to a launch I missed out on seeing a launch when I was in high school because we were already overbooked and I was tired and an outspoken you know teenager which I do and don't regret we were we had some crazy days and we drove in a coach bus 
from Youngstown, Ohio area to Florida without stopping. And our schedule was literally jam packed so we can enjoy like the Disney parks and do our parade thing and everything that, you know, the adults jammed in a schedule together for us. It's not, that was not my idea of just adding something else into that. So I've never seen a launch. I'd like to go see the launch. I would find a way to go to see this launch, so I'm not even worried about that criteria. I'm kind of worried about if they delay the launch, but that's... Launch dates can change without notice, hopefully because it's far out, far out enough. We'll know, but we're looking at, like, a this is... If, if I drive, this is a two-day drive. Down. So, yeah. After all of that, so... We essentially have gotten all the way through this, decided that I meet pretty much all of the criteria. By I, I mean we, CosmoQuest as a whole, um, filled out some of my personal information, and I am literally down to the how do you fulfill the criteria established for social media engagement and plan to use your time and presence at this event. Please use this space to elaborate on how you would fulfill the criteria to attend this NASA social. We'd like to hear why you'd like to attend this event and how you would like to use your time and presence at this event on your social media accounts. And they do not recognize, uh, they don't recognize Twitter as a social media account, which I find, or not Twitter, they do recognize Twitter, they don't recognize Twitch which I find odd. They recognize Snapchat, which I didn't think Snapchat was still a thing. I thought, I, I don't know. I've never used Snapchat. But we have a Twitter, we have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube channel, we have a blog, and we have, um, we have this Twitch channel. If we have an Instagram or Snapchat, I don't know about it. And if we have a Flickr, I also don't know about it. So we meet almost all those checkboxes. And I'm really just hung up on the how do I fulfill the criteria and how do I plan to use my time and presence as this event. I'm not going to be able to live stream. It's just, it's not possible. I was trying to do a close up of Puck, but then he moved. It's not possible to live stream this event. I would love to live stream a launch. Here's why I can't do it. One, I am on a very limited data plan, which yeah, I could bump up just for this event. Two, I've heard stories of bandwidth just dropping out the moment that, you know, the rocket starts to go. So even if I did have a connection, it wouldn't be stable. Three, that's going to involve a second person to help me with all of my stuff. I feel like it would involve a second person to involve, involve, to help me, words are hard, to help me with all of my stuff and just to help me not be overwhelmed. Um, they cannot accommodate guests, which is may or may not be a problem for me when i do travel i usually travel with someone or i meet someone at a destination i don't think i'm going to have that and i don't know if there's going to be another social media critter that i can essentially latch onto and be like hi here are my, here are all of my things on um I have all of this camera equipment that I'd love to take and, you know, capture the launch on, but that's a lot of gear. So I can handle it all by myself. It's just easier to have somebody else. So yeah, there's that. The flip side of I'm not going to have enough gear, battery power, etc., etc., whatever, is that PSI might, might, and I definitely put a might on this, they might actually be like, here's the gear you need to stream this. Which would be cool, but I don't want to count on that. So, yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm going to sit and marinate on this while we talk. And I really just want your input on what you'd like to see me do while I'm at. If, if I were to attend this event, I'd like input on what you would like to see me do. I intend on tweeting as much as I can. I can probably post to Facebook as well. In fact, I'm sure there's a way where I can essentially simultaneously um, tweet and post to the Facebook page. Uh, I'd love to make videos and even though I wouldn't be able to upload the videos while I'm there, come back, uh, edit them a little bit and upload them to our YouTube channel. I would love to use Twitch, but I, again, I don't think I, this is something I can live stream unless, uh, you know, it ends up being a Zoom chat and Pamela just kind of plops in my phone video is something. So I really don't know uh, what we could do as far as streaming if I were to go to this event, but I really would like to hear your guys' input on what you would like to see me do if I do go to this event. Because this would be super cool. I promise I won't ask about space toilets. There's no space toilets on this mission. Anyway, so that's that. And now we're going to do something super boring, but slightly related, of update the uh, rocket launch calendar, which I don't expect has changed much. So I just need my other window. I don't like that song. And I keep a Google Calendar. No, you cannot have access to it. You really don't want access to it. It's very ugly. But I do keep a Google Calendar full of... Um, oh, that's right, I didn't put that in there. Full of events that are essentially rocket launches. So I have not updated this because uh, I don't have Starlink in here. And I'm working in two monitors. So I apologize if you're like, what is she typing? I can't see what she's typing. You're not missing much. You really aren't missing much. So I saw something in chat. So give me one second and I'll pull chat up. Mike Cassidy says, take me as your lackey, carry bags, fetch coffee, do your makeup, etc." I can't have any guests though. I don't even know if that's um, a reasonable accommodation. They said um, that they can't accommodate guests. So I don't know if having another human with me counts as a guest or an accommodation. And it's one of those weird things that I know they're trying to keep track of body count. So yeah. And yeah, 10.30 PM. <laughs> Mike Cassidy could be my human support animal. That would be hilarious. It'd be like, human support animal? Human support animal? What's that? Is it trained? I'm not joking. These are things I've heard about my dogs. And I love my dogs. <sighs> so yeah, the next launch that we're going to do is 10.30 PM. And this is all Eastern time because it's, it's easier for me to process. Um, that's gonna be the next launch. And there wasn't a whole lot of information about it when I first looked it up. And obviously I have not updated my calendar in a few days because I didn't realize that there was a time set for this um, ISRO, and that's I-S-R-O, India Space Launch. Let me see if I can rearrange some windows here. I would love to take someone as my lackey. I have a feeling my mom would would be the one that claimed first dibs on being a human support animal. Because that's usually what she does. All right, and then Glonos M, which eventually I need to look up what that is. But I didn't have that it's a Ross Cosmos mission. I just had the name of it, so I need to fix that. Cosmos and save. 
and yeah. Oh look, there's the icon launch, which I swear is never going to happen. I'm not bitter, not at all. So I'm just gonna check by modified, and it looks like there were a bunch that were modified recently. The September is too far out for me to add. I just updated this one, I updated this one, and that was updated a while ago. So cool, that's quick. See, that was quick and painless. <sighs> Puck, why aren't you on camera? So now, We've done that. We're still marinating on, you know, what to do for the other thing. And now it's time to start up the daily space stuff. So I am going to new presentation. I want to get my windows kind of organized for that. So you guys can see what I'm doing and we'll go from there. So yes, I do my slides in, mm, excuse me, in Google Documents, Google Slides. It's just, it's the easiest thing I've figured out to come up to work with. Are you comfortable, Tinker? And if I have to move to another computer to present, I could. So actually, I think I already have Yep, I already have one started. So I started this one on Wednesday when I knew I would be doing daily space. So you don't ever see this this first page template when I present because I think it looks funny, but we use it as a thumbnail for some of our social media posts and I think possibly the YouTube videos. I'm not too sure. So that's we, since we normally have three boxes, we normally have three stories, but you know me, I go over. And then we're literally, literally Google Astronomy News. I'm not even, I have no shame, guys. Oh, Astronomy Day is coming up. That's cool. And we'll flop over to news and we'll take the astronomy off. And there's a lot of really sciencey things. I don't think either one of us have cover covered Hubble's hits into the deep legacy deep field. So I'll open that up to pop it in. And I don't even want to think about the DART mission trying to deflect a near-Earth asteroid. <sighs> mm, Alright, so I'm curious about the teenager skyrocketing her way into the astronomy world. There's a whole lot of stuff that sometimes I just don't understand. Plus, this isn't always the greatest place to go. I'm quite serious. Hi, bomb did it bombadil. Hi, bomb bombadil. 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 Bomb 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 bomb. You're just gonna be bomb. I am so sorry. Hey, Puck, can you speak? Speak, Puck. Come on, speak. Come on. Speak. Yeah? Did you say thank you? So Puck says thank you. I say thank you. Hear the Cheerios and make it rain. So if you're just tuning in, um, we're kind of poking at stories that I can use for... Oh... Mmm... What would I put it? So, 
date. I'm trying to think, how how would I put this? We're essentially doing behind the scenes stuff, and my brain is everywhere, and it's. I do not have Dr. Pamela's multitasking skills because I can hear my cat screaming and I know chat's going. <laughs> and etc. etc. Bombadil bomb bombadil. Bombadil! There we go. Bombadil. Says the one is silent technically. I don't try to say the one. I think it's just all the consonants all right together next to each other. So I pulled out Puck's brand new bed, which he will lay down occasionally because neither one of them were laying down on that blanket slash really sad. Uh, so is the Tom. Uh, really sad dog bed. Like Tinker would occasionally wrap herself up in it when it was like cold outside, but now that it's getting warm, she's like, nope, nope. So I have Google Scholar up and this is kind of my greatest fear is just a lot of this. It's, it's terrifying. So the Tom is implied. See, you guys keep saying the Tom is implied and I'm like, what? Oh, hey, cool. So I guess this is indeed a news story because Astronomy Day is on Saturday, May 11th. So, cool. Um, to begin with, many science museums and planetariums host special uh, programs and events. My planetarium is probably not going to be hosting anything special. I don't even know if they realize. And I'm amused at Puck's outline, his shadow on his on his dog bed. So with that, I feel like I almost need to go picture in picture. I can make that happen. We have the technology. Give me one second while I fix the technology. Meow. In fact, while I fix the technology, enjoy a picture of, you know, enjoy a larger version of the dog, I guess. I see chat happening. I will deal with that in a second. Okay. So this, this is, this is how we're going to do this as best as we can. Um, and I'm going to just constantly... Rose says, never learn Polish. I can actually sing a song in Polish. I can. My, uh... Mom's... My paternal grandfather's... I don't think it was him. I think it was his parents? I forget how far back. It's not obviously... It's one of those weird things where I remember people speaking Polish at family reunions and they were all older and now I don't think anybody speaks Polish at family reunions anymore. And I never really bothered to learn. Which everybody would have been like, that would have made sense for a language for you to learn. While it was not formally taught in my area, so. And my grandfather was like half deaf. So yeah, that was fun. Um, all right, so I think I have the picture in picture thing going. I really need a third monitor. So there's the picture in picture thing. I know it doesn't, it's just white on white on white on white on white. So we're gonna pull that up and then, are you okay, Tinker? Are you gonna be okay? I feel like you're not going to be okay. I wor I'm worried about you, Tink. So, all right, not full screen, simply because I am out of, I'm out of real estate and I'm trying to keep track of everything. 
All right, bye, Mike Cassidy. Thanks for, you know, hanging out with me. Pizza sounds good. I didn't have pizza last night. All right, so start with my speaker notes. And May 11th is Astronomy Day. I will eventually find a picture. I could, I guess I could use the one that they use here. It looks awfully small though. Um, oh, it's promoted by the Astra Astronomical League. Let's go there. Let's see what they have to say about all of this. Um, Mm, oh, that's the con astronomy night, which astronomy day. Okay, so they're doing, oh wow, there's just a whole bunch of astronomy day things. So I guess we go down to astronomy day spring. Shh. And there are a whole bunch of events. So I'm just going to copy paste this link and put it in my notes for later. I am excited about the one at the California Sciences in San Francisco, simply because I think that's a really cool uh, museum. And yeah. I guess the closest one to me it looks like is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of them all over the states. So that's cool. Uh, and they really I'm looking for something that I can just plug and play. Okay, so this is the history of it, and I will probably also copy paste this into my notes. And we'll probably do a lot of copy pasting and how about this image? Seems to work. And I will probably clean this up tomorrow. But I think this is a pretty neat image. So we're going to take it and use it. Alright, go back. And I've copy pasted that. So cool, that's one story. It's one less thing I have to worry about. And what's this about Bartsville Teen? So if you had pizza for lunch, Paranor, what are you going to have for dinner? Do, 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 do. Each year, the organization honors 24 students internationally who are making a difference in steam and space related field. Turkey dogs or toast? That sounds good. Okay. And this is what this this young woman did is she, she apparently did multiple projects but she collected 10,000 solar eclipse glasses along with these the astronomy club she's a part of for people in South America to view the eclipse safely. Um, so they collected all these glasses, then they sorted them out to figure out which ones were good and which ones are not. And then they sent them to Astronomers Without Borders who forwarded them to the people in Brazil, Argentina, and China. Or Chile, not China. Blech. Um, she filled, she also filed a patent for gamma ray shielding to make space travel less harmful to biological entities called quantum locked flux shielding. Oh my goodness. Um, and she's producing a planetarium show. Good for her. 
So that's pretty cool. I probably won't talk about her as part of daily space, but I feel like that's pretty cool. All right, so this is more my speed. Here is a, first we'll see if they have a source link at the bottom. Uh, I don't think so. Although we could just Google Hubble legacy field and probably get the information straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Here we go. Watch, this is going to be a huge image. Full res, 25,500 pixels by 25,500 pixels. I like myself, so I'm not going to click that one, but here is the the 2000 by 2000 one will be big enough for the uh, for the slides. That's really impressive. I feel like, you know what, we're gonna click it. Click, 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 click. And if you don't remember what it feels like, or you were too young to remember what it feels like to watch an image load line by line by line from dial-up. This is a good simulation of that. Which is why I didn't click this one, because I knew it was so freaking big. So entertain us. Let's serve some Cheerios at the dogs. <sighs> can I zoom in on it? I guess I can. Yeah, I bet the speed is etched into your memory. So I can zoom in on it, but it's all fuzzy. Maybe it'll be done. Maybe it won't be so fuzzy once it's done. Yeah, it's... Mine wasn't 300 baud, but... I do remember waiting for pictures to load line by line by line. Whew. I also remember that the first time I surfed the internet, it was entirely text only and getting my first browser that supported images was a big freaking deal. A big freaking deal. And I think the first website I went to with images was the website for M&Ms. So yeah. Paranor says, many people wonder how I can read text so fast. It's because I used to read it come through the modem. I couldn't read past 2400 baud though. When 9600 came about, my brain just couldn't process it. I, I know we didn't have 300. We may have had 9600 at some point or 2400. I would have to ask my dad. It's almost done loading. There's part of me that's like, I should download this thing. And it's done. All right, so I'm going to save this image because it, it downloaded. <laughs> because oof, oof, we don't want to do that again. And even when I zoomed in, everything's really fuzzy and pixelated, which makes me kind of sad. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. And so we'll just go back. We'll do this one, which loads quite, you know, faster. I think I just learned to read fast because I read so much. I'm interested in the color distortions down here. Yep. Two different things. They... This is actually better zoomed in. It's not as bad as the other one. You can actually see details and things that aren't just, like, blobs and pixels of light. Um, that was not a baby crying. That was my cat. So each one of these specks of light that you see... Except for things like this. These are stars that have the X's. But most of these are... I want to say most of these are galaxies. 
Like these ones are easier to make out. Um, this one, this tiny, tiny line right here is a galaxy. Uh, beyond that, I'm tempted to say each one of these little dots is a galaxy, but I don't... I don't trust myself to say something like that. Because I could be wrong, and I, I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression. But this field, this image, is amazing. And I guess they compiled a bunch of different... Uh, Hubble data sets into one. So we will definitely be talking about this tomorrow. Because this is something that I can kind of digest and, you know, talk intelligently about. I think it's still downloading that image. So... Flop over here. Flop this in. Oh, it worked! I'm kind of impressed. And... I'll we'll actually make it bigger so it's not just tiny specks. And I'm tempted to make it even larger still, but I kind of like having an edge. Because what will what will really be seen is what you see here on the thumbnail. I kind of like having the edge there. So first things first. Save the... Really? I know. Save where I got it from. And... Oh, they have some fast facts. Oh, wow. Um, there's a lot of proposals on this. And they listed all the filters they use, too. Which is really cool. So, for simplicity's sake, rather than listing all of the proposals... Uh, we're just going to count them. So one, two, three, four, five. Where's where's a piece of scrap paper? Oh, um, Puck, you're supposed to help me out with this stuff. I don't even know where my. Okay, well this will work. This will work. Okay. So we have. Five from the first, and three, four, five, so that's ten, so five, ten, oops, uh, one, two, three, four, five, that's fifteen, one, two, three, four, five, that's twenty, one, two, three, four, five, that's twenty-five, one, two, three, four, five, that's 30. So there's 32. 32 different proposals um, of data went into making this image, which is amazing. 32 different proposals. And I guess I should actually flip so you guys can see what I'm looking at. I gotta check random on Discord. I'm gonna assume I need to check it right now. <gasps> Found the perfect headline for the rockets. That's hilarious. That is indeed hilarious. Oh, rough smat. If you're not on our Discord, you probably should be, because you're missing out on the fun. Oh, that was good. And this song is kind of sad. Or dark, and not what I want, so... I don't even know what window it's in anymore. There it is. Alright. Give me one second to get reorganized. I I have two I came back from Pamela's with 
two more monitors. I just haven't set them up yet. And I think I can plug three in? I'm not sure. So, all right. I don't know if... any of the astronomers I know were on these proposals. Um, I know they would not have been... I don't think they would have been first authors. And to me, there's really only one way to figure this out. And that is look at Hubble proposals. With my caps lock all the way on. Um, trying to past programs. Oh, my. Let's try Scholar. Uh, google.com again and we're going to look for Feldmeyer because his name is unique enough that it should pull up what I'm looking for and I think Arvix is what I want diffuse light in the cluster um isn't quite what I want. Um, Alright, first of all, how do I view all of the people? Oh, this is a really old one. It has him listed at, at Noah. <laughs> he has not been at Noah for, for many years. Anything that says hyperbaric oxygen therapy is not him. Um... Is it? It's not at Arvix. It's something else. Let me search off screen. He has way more articles than what's listed. Uh, I forget how many published refereed articles he, Dr. Feldmeyer, has. Um, I know this because I work on his CV. So I think it's ADS. Citations. It is ADS. Okay. So let me copy into this. And this is the astrophysics data system. And we're going to do author. Feldmeyer, John. Hey, hush. And... Really? Oh my. Alright. Let's just do Feldmeyer. And then I can narrow it down from there. See, anything that's Feldmeyer J is him. Except for Feldmeyer Joel. And I don't think there's. Darrell P is also the other one we're looking for. And it needs to be in astronomy. Limit two. And I'm not sure. don't think it did what I wanted it to do. I don't remember how to make it apply. Oh, it already has collection astronomy. Okay. Um, see, he's not in here, and I know he didn't publish before 92. And 
I know this is a really weird way of... Here we go. So we also want to look for Mihos. Because that is who indeed would have been war. And then part of me is like Hubble? It's a deep Virgo. I don't think they did any of the big fields. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they did. So maybe it's Mihos I really want to search for. Alright, so we'll do, start over, just start over completely. Author Mihos, who I've met a couple times. And Hubble. I don't know. See, there's the Virgo. But this would have been early 2000s? I'm thinking of in particular. So let's remove Hubble. Let's see what we find. Still thinking early 2000s. Because there was an image that was released. That we, I remember putting up on the dome. But maybe we had nothing to do with that image. Is that? <sighs> Part of me is like, crap, is that in his thing? Because I don't know if that's in his thing now. <laughs> anyway. Maybe I was mistaken. Because... I don't know if they had anything to do with the deep, you know, essentially uh, Hubble Deep Field. Um, that was 1995. And then, so it would have been 2004 is the one I'm thinking of, which is the ultra deep field. Hey, Star Song! Sorry I missed you sliding in. I am trying to figure out things and stuff. <laughs> things and stuff. Alright, so observations. It doesn't say who made the proposal or if it does at the oh at the workshop okay somebody did make some sort of proposal um there's part of me that's like there's a really easy way to get an answer to my question of whether or not Feldmeyer or John had Feldmeyer or John Feldmeyer and John are the same person um, there's a really easy way for me to figure out if Feldmeyer or Durrell had a way or had anything to do with this image. And I think I'm just going to text both of them. Because <laughs> this will bother me if I don't. Um, it will bother me if I don't. So let me pull up the right app. Because I know not one, not two, but three astronomers 
How dare I? Aw. You know what? While I'm doing this, let's put Puck up on the screen. I mean, I know he's not in his bed right now, but let's put Puck up on, this, on the screen. I know it says hold on we're starting soon but there there's there's an empty dog bed and there's a dog so while I while I message John and Pat because this is really bothering me um, is really really bothering me and then they're gonna be like what what are you doing yeah he is very fluffy that is one of his nicknames which is very confusing for my cat whose name is Tuffy I shouldn't say that that deep field because then they'll be like which deep field image so See, and the reason why I'm asking about this for John and Pat is because Pat gets a lot of Hubble time. A lot of Hubble time. Oh, not deep field, ultra deep field. Thursday night, right? Right. So they shouldn't be teaching. Um, has gotten a lot of Hubble time. And the reason why I'm thinking of it is because way back in the day, um, and I feel like they would have used the data from the Hubble ultra deep field but I don't think so because it's saying Fornax and that's not quite what it is so you know what? Let, first of all let's see what part of the sky this is actually pull it, you know pulling from um, do 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 Yeah, no, the, here's an even better breakdown of it. So I'll flip back to the other image. Hi, Hayek. I'm just kind of um, chilling out, I guess. Yeah, I know you guys only had Puck. I fixed it now. So welcome. Um, since you're new here, Doggy Cam is, that is Puck with his brandy new dog bed, which he might occasionally lay down on and just be, be uh, chill. I'm throwing plain, generic, nothing fancy Cheerios at both of my dogs. There is another dog off camera, but I don't think she'll be on camera because Puck likes to hog all of the food to himself. And I am preparing for... Yeah, hi Puck! Yeah, aren't you a good boy? Aren't you a good boy? And I am preparing for tomorrow's daily space, which is our news and astronomy uh, roundup thing. And I'm not usually the one that does daily space most of the time uh, because I am not an astronomer. Dr. Pamela is our astronomer. She is in Budapest at a convention. And um, yeah, I know enough astronomy to be dangerous. So there's that. And the image that you're looking at on the screen right now is the Hubble legacy field where they compiled a whole bunch, and I mean a whole bunch of data. 
into one image and I was just talking about the Hubble Ultra Deep Field and how I think the astronomers at Youngstown State University, that would be Dr. John Feldmayer and Dr. Pat Durrell, I think they got Hubble time on that, but I'm not sure. And I'm, I'm texting them now. And the reason why I'm thinking of it is because way back in, before I deployed, how about we put that? So between 2004 and 2006, we put this um, ultra deep field on the dome. And by dome, I mean planetarium dome, because as an undergrad, I worked in a planetarium. I worked under two different people, two different time spans, and this is the pre-deployment time span, where we still had slide projectors. And in order to create an all slide projection, or an all sky projection, we needed to use every slide projector and we needed to essentially slice up an image into pie shape pieces, print them out to slides or get them developed on slides. I'm not sure how that worked. Uh, put them in the corresponding slide machine or slide projectors and that's how we would project something to cover the entire dome before we had our digital technology. So I remember this being before we had our first digital projector, or maybe we had our first digital projector and we just weren't ready to show it off yet. So, um, and I don't remember why we showed it off other than it was cool. So I'm texting both of them now. I remember, um, Paranor says, or nobody knew how to hook it up. I actually, by the time the uh, training person for Sidome arrived, I actually knew Sidome better than him. So uh, I unfortunately did not remember all of that, you know, five years later when I came back to school. It was just one of those, okay, this is what I remember doing to make this and this and this work. So one, two, three, go. Um, but it was a pretty neat system. It had a program called Starry Night in it where you could, you, a lot of people liked flying to the other planets. I liked going to different places on the planet and looking at the nighttime sky from there because I didn't have to know latitude and longitude. I could just type in by city. Uh, I could do latitude and longitude on the star ball, but the star ball was purely mechanical and I remember using it a little bit, but I wasn't nearly as comfortable with it as I was with the digital. So, and now I can't remember his name. Put it up on the dome with side projectors. And I'm asking them to remember an event that happened close to 15 years ago. <laughs> and I feel bad about it, but I don't remember why we did it. Just that it involved slide projectors and Photoshop. So send. All right. We'll we'll see if I get a reply from either one of them. And oh, I must be hitting the cord for the doggy cam. Give me one second, and I'll fix it like why is the doggy cam moving everywhere so yeah this is the image and I'm gonna copy paste this image into the slides for tomorrow as well because I feel like that also covers things well 
like it gives a much better idea of exactly what you're looking at and the, just the general size of this thing which is huge compared to the uh, Hubble Ultra Deep Field which at the time was it was pretty freaking large it was a big deal so back out of this and oh I, that's right I went to fast facts so oh it is the Fornax okay so it's Constellation Fornax because somebody is going to ask me about that somebody is going to ask me about that Constellation Fornax which I think Fornax means ant I'm probably gonna have to look that one up too Fornax the image is 25 arc minutes across, which again means not much to a lot of us, but it is a pretty large image. Um, and I'm just amazed that it took 32 proposals, but I don't recognize anybody, any of the first authors. So that doesn't mean that Pat and John weren't involved with these things it's just I don't know if they you know if they were so there's that I feel like how many filters did it use to used three cameras just everything that went into making this image is kind of amazing three cameras and a total of one, two, three for the UV, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's nine for WFC. And then WFC three, I should be more clear. And then one, two, three, four, five for ACS. So that's 14 filters. That's a lot. That's that's a lot. 14 filters. Um, that's way more than what I do. And oh, they even have information on the color. So I'm going to just copy that and paste that in there because I am a dork. And I find it curious that they used two, that they assigned both blue and green the same filter, the F606 wide. I mean, for green, they also, you know, use this SDSS filter, which I'm not sure what that means. Um, but yeah, it's it's huge. This is a huge image. And now we're going to geek out and figure out where the Fornax constellation is. An arc okay, there we go. Hey Bill! You just kinda slid on in. I am literally preparing for uh, Daily Space tomorrow. And I have essentially two news stories. One is this uh, Hubble legacy field, which is humongous. And the other is that Saturday is astronomy day, but springtime. Which part of me is like, they should really just make it on an equinox to easy, make it easier. Oh, you've been lurking for a while. Well, that's okay. Have you been lurking long enough to have any input on the NASA social media thing? Because if you guys want to contribute, that that would be that would be amazing. Um, all right, so now we want to look up Fornax. Just so I have an image of it. Not that long. All right, so give me one second to. I don't even know where this is in the world. 
or in is in the sky. Uh, give me one second to essentially uh, original file. Save. Maybe I can save it as and then PNG. Uh, stick a bookmark in it. Well, I'm going to talk about that in a second. I'm going to go back to it. So, there's this whole SpaceX launch thing. I think you've heard of them. They're launching a Falcon Heavy in June. No earlier than June 22nd. And they're accepting up to 55 social media uh, critters to essentially have the same... Uh, news access, the same news media access as, you know, news media people. Um, so yeah, maximum 55 social media users will be selected to attend this two-day event and will be given access similar to news media. NASA social participants will have the opportunity to... I just realized I should probably switch. We'll have the opportunity to... View a launch of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, tour NASA facilities at the Kennedy Space Center, speak with representatives from NASA, SpaceX, US Air Force, and NOAA, view and take photographs of the Falcon Heavy rocket at Launch Complex 39 Alpha, and meet fellow space enthusiasts who are active on social media. So the deadline to apply is May 16th by 12 noon Eastern. And essentially, social applications will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Me, myself, is Binary Ablaze, am not active enough on social media to qualify, but CosmoQuest, as an entity, is active enough. They literally cover all the bases that they ask for, which is... Uh, let me pull up the application. I know you guys can't see it. Um, they're asking for information on, like, Twitter accounts, Facebook, both personal profile and Facebook page, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, Flickr, a blog if you have it, and other. They don't recognize Twitch as a social media platform, which annoys me, but whatever. Um, and uh, the criteria is essentially actively use multiple social networking platforms and tools to disseminate information to a unique audience, regularly produce new content that features multimedia elements, have the potential to reach a large number of people using digital platforms, reach a unique audience, separate and distinctive from traditional news media and or NASA audiences, must have an established history of posting content on social media platforms, have previous postings that are highly visible, respected, and widely recognized, does not feature items such as profanity, spam, adult-oriented material, and or other inappropriate activities. So, yeah. Um... So you saw a tweet about that, but you haven't followed up. Um, any place to footnote Dr. Pam's collab on... Astronomy Cast and WSH. So, um, oh, you gotta go AFK. Um, essentially, I have to write a, a paragraph on why I want to go and how I plan to use the uh, event. So, yes, there is a place to collab. Um, there is a place to put place to put a footnote for all of that, but. Uh, it would be me going, not Dr. Pamela, so I kind of have to speak as a broad CosmoQuest audience. Yeah. But uh, here is the link for it. And from there you can see the application. So, sorry, I didn't mean to hold you up from dinner. And now, back to our regularly scheduled kind of programming. Like... Why don't you just stay on camera? You have this nice comfy bed. Just lay down on the bed. Um... 
All right, so Fornax, which I think I saved, which means I now, um, Okay, I th think I can mention that. It's more of, they also wanna know how I plan to use the time and why I want to go. And I think that's what I'm struggling with because I know I can't live stream. Uh, there's just, it's just not going to be possible. And the only reason I can come up for where to, you know, why to go is we, live stream rocket launches all the time and even though I wouldn't be able to live stream this one because we don't have the proper equipment for it it would be really cool to essentially live tweet it with pictures so and maybe do a zoom interface with you know Dr. Pamela so I I don't know and I would appreciate any feedback because at some point I'm gonna have to vomit words onto a page of you know, why I would like for us to have a presence and, uh, you know, how we would handle. <coughs> Jandra says, hook up with Daz for that. He might even already be planning to go. I probably will have to hook up with Daz for that. Daz may be the social media creature that I just kind of latch onto and go, please, please help me. So look at Puck being all good and pretty. Just just so you all can have a larger view of Puck. He's being so good. Um, because I feel like my reasons... Yeah, she could help with the wording, but I think she's asleep right now. So I, I think I'll type out a, a draft and send it to her and see what she says. Um, because there's the selfish part of me that's like, I've never seen a launch in person. <laughs> And the unselfish part of, you know, we cover rocket launches literally all the time. And it would be cool to add to our coverage of that for me being live, you know, on site. So, I mean, absolute worst case scenario, I could figure out a way to FaceTime Pamela <laughs> while I'm doing all of this. So, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I, I will send, I will type, <coughs> excuse me, I will do uh, word vomit. Oh, that's cool. Daz even has a partnership with NASA Spaceflight, which I believe is like a one-man organization, and gets access to even mainstream press stuff now. This is going to give me something similar to mainstream press access. So, but... Partially because I'm not located anywhere near Cape Canaveral physically means I, I don't know if I would have good enough. Um, oh, he has a press pass through NASA space flight. That's pretty cool. Um, that is really cool. I just, I don't know how much I would even be able to. I don't. I don't know if Pamela has a press pass or not. Um, it would be cool if we could both go, but I don't know how that lines up with her schedule. And I do know if she goes through this program, she actually has to apply separately, so... Because no guests are allowed. And if I apply and I'm accepted... Um, if I apply and I'm accepted, I can't transfer this. So it's pretty much one of those, once I'm going, I'm going. I mean, I honestly, the best I can hope for is that I get waitlisted. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Uncle Bill says that has been a big thing for Daz since PSP launched. That's super cool. It's super cool. Um, I would, I would love to go and I would love to meet other people because I do a lot of this stuff from my house in Youngstown where there's, it's not, you know, like living near Wallops or Cape Canaveral. There's people are like, oh, there's a rocket launch. That's cool. Or actually, usually it's, oh, there's a rocket launch today. That still happens. 
kind of thing. Um, not a lot of awareness. And I could even see my local planetarium, which I'm still associated with, being like, here, take, take our equipment and bring us back stuff. So, yeah. There's that. Um, now there's part of me that's like, I want to... I want to get our lecturer to apply because that way if she gets accepted I could go. So all right, Bill's officially going AFK. Um it's it's just where Youngstown is. It's we're in the Rust Belt. We have a college, but that doesn't mean everybody here is college educated. There are a lot of people here that just can't afford college and yeah. It's kind of sad. So yeah, there's that. You're being a very good boy, Puck. You really are. And then he immediately moves. He immediately moves. So... It should be here somewhere. Orion, Fornax. It's transparent, which is fine, because we're just going to slap it on a white background and call it good. And... Hey! There's a follow! So, hi, Ed Shift, Welcome! So, there's this neat thing that happens when you follow. Um, so, he's not really on camera. Fake him out. Puck, can you speak? Come on, speak! Speak! Yeah. Alright, so Puck says thank you, I say thank you. And in a little bit you'll see him. So here are the Cheerios for follows, bits, donations, anything, subs. I throw Cheerios at the dogs. So I hope you enjoy and make it rain! And now he is going to, to hoover up all of the Cheerios. And my other dog is going to look very sad. Here, Tinker. Would you, would you like a Cheerio, Tinker? She's like, yes please, give me a Cheerio. So, yeah. Totally thank you for the follow. I Even if you're going to sit here and lurk, that's totally fine. I, I appreciate the follow. We don't bite, though. You can chat. So, I am working on putting my slides together for tomorrow. And I pulled up this nice image of Fornax. And that's important because Paranor doesn't bite hard. Ignore him. It's important because of this image, which I guess we'll just go to fast facts. This image is in taken from inside the constellation Fornax. So I'm really I feel like I need to mention Fornax at some point. But I'm not sure if I should do that before or after, and that might be a decision I make in the morning. So, I know Fornax is not a constellation I am familiar with, and it may not even be... That's why. That's why it's not... I'm not familiar with it. It is in the Southern Hemisphere. <sighs> that's why I thought it sounded funny. So, Southern Hemisphere. I am not up to all my constellations for the summit. Southern Hemisphere. Uh, which can be kind of a problem. Mm, I guess there's three bright stars, which would be boom, boom, boom. What makes it up? So it's just kind of this weird little line. And this bigger line, I guess, is the constellation. No, that's not it. That's not it at all. I'm sorry. It's actually really hard. Okay, the highlighted area is the constellation area and the outline. These other lines are line art for other constellations. And yeah, this one is just two lines, just like that. And I think Fornax means ant. This, and this is weird. So where's Fornax in this? 
Fornax, Chemica, and Machina Electrica, which I'm not I'm not joking, this is a real thing. It can't be this one. This one's too big. This could potentially be it, because this is only three stars. But I don't know. I don't know. This is just not very... This art is not very clear. Um... Do, 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 do. Yeah, these are not visible from Europe, which means they're not visible from where I am. Hi, Nicandria! How's it going? Thanks for the raid! So yeah, we don't do more than 10 emotes, but yeah, hi! I'm just getting ready for tomorrow and trying desperately to <laughs> figure out what I'm going to cover for daily space. So yeah, thank thank you for uh, rating us, Nicandria. She is another educational streamer and I think you know Pamela better than you know me. So, but you are awesome. And I appreciate all of your awesomeness. Dr. Pamela is in Budapest. So... Oh! Uh, lawyer? Psh, you can still be educational. Oh, look! Look! I think that was a follow! Alright! Hey, Puck! Speak! Come on! Speak! Alright! Puck says thank you! I say thank you! Here's the cheers! And make it rain! You're a lawyer! That's super cool! And Canadian! So yeah, Dr. Pamela's in Budapest, and I'm kind of apparently doing most- I've done most of Daily Space this week, which is only slightly intimidating. And I am not an astronomer, my background is in computer science, but I know enough astronomy to be dangerous. So yeah. Blue Origin Moonlander, this is just- this is me- Looking up the constellation Fornax to talk about, um, well, this super cool image that I'll, I'll show you guys. So this is the Hubble, Hubble Legacy field, and we're just gonna look at the, the slightly bigger uh, other one. Oh, I saw something else come through. Oh, another follow! Hey, Puck! I think he's too busy sniffing for Cheerios. I can cast Meteor Storm then? I don't know what that means, Bunny. I don't. I don't know what that means. But yeah, this is essentially tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's spoilers for Daily Space. Um. Oh, with Stellarium, I could. I don't think I have Stellarium installed on this computer, which is quite sad. Hey, Puck. Puck. Did you know that Japan launched a demonstration satellite to test uh? artificial meteor showers for events. I'm not joking, this really happened. I think it's called ARC or something. It's in my Twitter feed, but because I don't read Japanese, I can only appreciate the pretty pictures. But yeah, these are the weird things that happen in like spacey stuff. All right, I don't think I can get Puck to speak, but we'll do the Cheerios anyway. So here's the Cheerios and make it rain. Oh, that's cool, Hayek! Yeah, buddy, Japan would totally do that. Um, yeah. There are two dogs. The other one is a little, a little intimidated by the floofers because the floofer's been a bit uh, food aggressive. And they're enjoying his brand new bed. Well, he's enjoying his brand new bed. The other dog's like chilling in her crate, which is actually what the doggy cam is sitting on. And, uh, yeah. So, there it is. Yeah, artificial meteor shower. And what else? What other cool things have gone up? So, there was, there's two, in December there were two art exhibits. I wouldn't call, well, I would call one of them that. That went up on SpaceX, and one of them failed because the government was shut down, and there were a lot of like we're talking like 64 small satellites released pretty much all at once. Oh, thanks for the follow! More Cheerios! Speak! 
Come on, speak! He's not gonna speak. I'm sorry. Here's the Cheerios and make it rain! We did indeed cover that launch. It's archived on YouTube, but there were something like 64 satellites for 35 customers released, and one of the art projects kind of got lost in the phrase, and it was designed to have a very limited lifetime, and by the time that FAA was like... FAA or FCC? I think it was FCC was ready to assign it an identifier because it had this huge reflective balloon it was going to inflate and reflect sunlight back down to the earth. The batteries in that satellite were already dead. And I don't think it's been officially um, officially identified. I think it's just one of the random object ABC or whatever that is associated with that launch. The other art exhibit, oh, more, more Cheerios, more Cheerios. Tinker's like, I'm gonna get what drops. More Cheerios, thank you for the follow. Um, the other art exhibit that went up is really more of a memorial. Uh, well, thank you for the raid, Nicandria. I'll have to see you later. Bye, Nicandria. So the other, the other art exhibit that went up was really more of a memorial than yeah neuropilot it may have been faa it's it's confusing because faa and fcc are both involved in satellites and they needed to essentially be sure that their orbit was clear before they could send the signal to inflate the reflective balloon mirror thing so that's why it may have been the FCC that they couldn't get a hold of. Um, but anyways, this other art or this other art exhibit, and I use that because it's really more of a memorial. It's called Enoch, and I don't have a picture of it handy, and it has nothing to do with what's on the screen, so I'm gonna flip away from the screen. Uh, the other art exhibit is called Enoch and is a memorial for the first black astronaut. Uh, his name was Robert Lawrence Jr. And he was a super accomplished man. He had his PhD in physical chemistry. He was a major in the Air Force. Like he did ROTC during his undergrad. And he was a test pilot. And he was also a pilot instructor. So six months after he was selected he died in an f-104 crash as neuropilot says uh, training a junior pilot so he never got to go to space he was part of the manned orbital laboratory i think is what it's called and all the astronauts that project never happened but all the astronauts from that group went on to fly on the shuttle and he would have been one of those people that got to fly on the shuttle or fly the shuttle because while he was working with all of these planes that don't glide he developed techniques to essentially fly the future shuttle which were used and he had a lot of contributions and he just never got to do them manned orbital laboratory that's what i thought um only those under 35 transferred for from mol okay thank you so i just remember reading that it was nasa astronaut group seven and it was seven because it was seven of them that uh transferred and he probably would have he probably would have transferred with them he wasn't very old when he died he really wasn't very old when he died. But yeah, it was um, a very unfortunate crash. But this memorial, see if I can pull it up quickly. This memorial was very sweet because um, if I can spell correctly, it's a canope, it's a 24 karat canopic jar. And I think this is, yeah, this will work. This doesn't have the image on it. Um, it was a 24 karat canopic jar that had Robert Lawrence Jr.'s bust on it. And I'm searching. This 
fast as I can so I can pull up an image to show you guys this image. Um, canopic jars were used by the ignore the the picture in picture thing. Let's see if I can turn that off. There we go. Um, they were used by the Egyptians to preserve organs for the afterlife. And then this entire canopic jar was taken and blessed at a Shinto shrine in Japan and is recognized as a container for Robert Lawrence's soul. So this container, which this is the display unit that you're looking at, um, this container was, with his soul in it, was launched and it survived the launch and it ejected perfectly and now it is in a sun synchronous orbit where it should be there for about seven years so they call it an art project but it's really a very fitting memorial to this to this uh gentleman so yeah that's the other cool thing that went up into space i'm, I'm sorry that was kind of a kind of a downer, but I, I feel like it's really important because the orbital reflector got so much more attention than Enoch did. And Enoch was meant to bring this man's life to the foreground of public knowledge. So, yeah. It is really cool, Bunny. Um, Pernor says, Celebrating life is never a downer. Nor our pilot says there were a few African American fighter pilots in Vietnam who went to test pilot school. Some went into the astronaut class of 78. That's also super cool. He was selected in the 60s, if I recall correctly. I probably should take a break from space toilet stuff and write up a more comprehensive either script or blog post or article about this man and hey thanks for the the host uh comic girl write up a more comprehensive script blog post whatever about this project and about this man because i don't know at the time if the armed forces were segregated i don't know at the time if training was segregated like I don't know any of that, and I feel like there's a lot more to dig into, and yeah, I know it's a little weird that I'm, you know, some white girl that's interested in this, but I also don't see, with the appropriate amount of care and respect, how it could be bad that a white girl is interested in this. So yeah, I, I have faith that it won't be terrible, but I, I feel a little bit terrible that this has just been ignored. And not to get too SJWE, but use my privilege to make his story more known. So, yeah, yeah. And Paranor is like, what's a silly thought? What a silly thought. You're human, they're human. Just remember there's always people that are that are downers on, on interracial relationships and things can get weird anyways thank you for the host comic girl on to way more positive happy things puck can you speak come on puck speak come on that's weak Woof. Woof. all right puck says thank you i say thank you here are the cheerios and make it rain we try not to get too political but you know things are just a matter of life so yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right. So yeah, spoilers for tomorrow is what we've been working on. And uh, I think we got as far as yeah, those people need to sit on the side and maybe think about things, think long and hard about things. I have so far, um, Oh, here we go. Here's something from Neuropilot. Captain John Young was asked what he thought about women and African-American astronauts. He said they made the grade they should fly or something similar when he was chief astronaut in the 70s and 80s. And yeah, they did. And the armed forces nowadays are way more integrated than they may have been back in the day because they weren't always integrated. 
and I'm not entirely too sure when the swap made for integration happened. And racism still happens in the in the armed forces. Gender discrimination still happens, but it's not necessarily systematic like it is in civilian life. The essentially the playing field is even if you quite frankly make the grade, you should do the thing. So yeah, something that I've only learned to appreciate as I've gotten older and lived in civilian life. So, 1948, thank you. Thank you for pulling that up. So that's when that order eventually led to this end of segregation, but women still had separate training. I think all the way up until the 80s, which I still find weird. So, all right, Fornax, turn on my picture-in-picture picture thing. That, that, that was not supposed to be... There we go. Turn on my picture-in-picture picture thing so you can see all that. Neuropilot says, FA-18s don't discriminate, they kill pilots equally. They do. And yeah, I try to do work to recognize other humans as humans, but you know, there's people, people can get weird about it and I hate that people get weird about it and white people especially can get super uncomfortable talking about race. So yeah, there's that. And people are like, why are you talking about race? I'm like, cause it is actually kind of important, but we're here for science. So let's get back to daily space. Um, so Fornax, which is this teeny tiny constellation, which is full of this uh, Hubble Deep Field. This is the Ultra Deep Field. And I don't have a reply back from Pat or John. That makes me sad. They're gonna be like, what, what, what is this? Um... So this is, I think this is what I remember putting on the dome back when I was really young. Not really young. When I was a baby. Kind of in, um... As far as academia. So in Chinese astronomy, the stars that correspond with Fornax are within the White Tiger of the West. Which... They... It's one of the... <coughs> don't, don't start. We're not gonna go down too deep. Hey, I said don't start. Um, that's actually neat and I should check that out. Hey, stop it. We're not gonna go down too deep in the Chinese constellations because they can be confusing. So yeah, so I have essentially switch so you guys can see my slides. I have essentially two stories right now and I'm going to do the copy pasting into oh I did not know that Jean Drulun that Jean Drulun says all of NASA's flight crew were open to having women pilots even in the 60s it was the suits from Congress that was against it that unfortunately actually makes sense which makes me sad. Um, I think there women in combat before it was finally taken care of, plus all of that. And that was, to me, essentially, that's another one. You meet the grade, you can do the thing. So, and I think we'll just crop that like this. Boom! There's our first image. And then we're gonna take probably this image. Copy and make that our second image. Paste.
And then I have to do this weird thing where I either make it really large or I find a good little chunk. I think that's a good eye-catching chunk. And then crop it down. So I still need to do a third news story. I mean, I don't need to, but I would like to do a third news story. Hey, Hex! Noel, how you doing? Working on daily space for tomorrow. And, um... I'm essentially taking input on what people would like to see if I went to a launch. As far as social media wise. I don't think I could stream. But... Because we don't have the equipment for it. But... I can take a whole bunch of pictures. A whole bunch of pictures. Alright, so that's our second story. <sighs> yeah... The... There's been this... trend... It actually has been studied that... Um, there's usually a lot of pushback from like patriarchal societies when women are given more access, access to things. Okay, so why did, oh, that's interacting galaxies. I think that was just a poster or something. So slide this window back over here. Ah, I lost everything, as you do. I only need that up. And, Knowles says, I was contemplating seeing a launch in June, but I don't want to go to Florida in June. That's exactly the launch that I am considering applying, well, not considering, that I'm going to apply for the uh, NASA social program for. Um, yeah. Hey! Thanks for the... Thanks for the follow, yes, Pam. Hey, Puck, can you speak? Come on, speak. <laughs> oh, that was, come on, better. There you go. Puck says thank you, I say thank you, and let me see if I can get a bigger version of Puck up on the screen. All right, there's a bigger version of Puck up on the screen. Here's the Cheerios, and make it rain. Go on, Tinker. Go on. Get in there, Tinker. Oh. There's a Tinkerbell! We have a rare sighting of two dogs on the same doggy cam! Puck's been mean with the food. Uh, and Paranor says August is the month to avoid. I don't think I've ever been to Florida during the, you know, summer months. But June should still be okay. It's not too, too hot yet. Um... And... Yeah, so I just flip back to what I was doing, and August is deadly without central air. I believe it. I believe it. I really do. <sighs> He's like, what if I can just scooch this down one more year? See, I know, I know about this one, imaging Virgo's diffuse inner cluster light, but I don't think, I don't think that Virgo and Fornax are not in the same part of the sky. An imaging survey of satellite galaxies. Is Lane S part of this? Oh, using the satellite sample. Um, but it was sponsored by NASA and it was carried out by JPL. So part of me is like, I don't, I don't know. Do I still have that open? I think I do. All right, where's the fast facts? I'm just trying to be nosy and see if they were haven't replied to me. I'll probably get a why did you text me this 
question the next time I see them. Lane. So I do not see a lane. Nope. All right. So I think we're, we're done digging with that. That would be cool though, if I could be like, hey, look, people I knew, you know, did the thing. And I should probably, I will add words to these slides tomorrow. Because it's tricky for me to write and do, um, and chat and keep track of everything. Colonel Collins is a great pilot. Um, one of the very best. Oh, you must be talking about Colonel Aline, Aline Collins from STS-63. STS uh, Jandra earlier said, all the surviving women pilots from the first test group NASA did were finally recognized when the first STS female pilot was announced. Astronaut or Colonel Aline M. Collins for STS-63. So... Oh, wow. Noel says, I hosted a stellar star party last August during the Perseids. No more than a month before a tornado took out most of the trees in that same park. That's kind of terrifying. Oh, and somehow I missed the fact that it was like the entire astronomy week. Oops. Oops. Well, that happens. Is it Mother's Day? It is Mother's Day weekend. Oh no. Oh no. I may not stream this Sunday, guys. I forgot it was Mother's Day. And yeah. So that's about Astronomy Day, and that's about Hubble. More about Astronomy Day. More about Astronomy Day. There's this nonsense, which, you know, is that. And fizz.org, fizz which is what I'm looking for. And we're going to go to Astronomy in Space and see if anybody's posted anything. <laughs> that cry you hear. Oh, something happened. Oh, thanks for the follow, Dr. Wraith! Um, let me fix my picture in picture since I am browsing. So, see the dogs know what that sounds like. Hey, Puck, speak! Come on, speak! Come on, speak! Really? Oh. Alright, Puck says thank you, I say thank you. Here's the Cheerios. He's sitting and it's adorable, it's just off camera. And make it rain! Oh my. Thanks for the follow. Uh. Oh, that is a shame, Noel. Oh, excuse me. They perfectly blocked all the light. Neuropilot says STS 93 with Colonel Collins in command. They had several major malfunctions on the way out. That's terrifying. Fuel leak, engine controllers malfunction, yet she still made it to orbit, mission successful. That is amazing. Go her. So. Um. Let's see. We have gravitational waves leave a detectable mark, physicists say. And gravitational for forces in protoplanetary disks may push super Earths close to their stars. Oof. 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 Oh, wait. Amazon Bezos unveils Lunar Lander Project Blue Moon. I am cool with this. How am I. Is space exploration really a different. It must be a different thing. So. Um, part of me is like, I think that's what we're gonna do. I think that's gonna be our third story. Vulcan the Conqueror says, Blue Moon? Yeah, that's actually what it's called, is Blue Moon. 
Uh, I think somebody was trying to tell me that, um... Tell me that this was going to be announced today. And... I know, everybody's, everybody's skeptical, and you're allowed to be skeptical, you really are. Um... But I also don't blame them for doing what they're doing now. Which is being very cautious. Also, this looks like he's standing... It, it almost looks like he's standing in front of a cartoon. I know he's not. But... Um, it just looks like kind of a bad render. Not a bad render, it looks like a stylistic render. So... Let me make sure I credit this photo, because there's nothing in the thing about it. Paste. Give me one second to deal with this thing, and then I'll look back at chat. Yeah, I don't I don't blame anybody for being skeptical, and I'm not really a big fanboy, fangirl, whatever. I'm not gonna get super excited about this. It's cool, but uh, we know how we we know how hard it is to get something to land on the moon. Um, I th Vulcan says I think it'll fly eventually. It's just hard to hop on the blue train when they don't have a live webcast. Uh, they they broadcast their um their launches. They totally broadcast their launches. I don't know if they had a live webcast for this, though. If they did and I missed it, well, that's that's on me. Um, first of all, I'm kind of annoyed that they're saying this will be ready by 2024. They didn't live broadcast for this? Ah! No, they live broadcast the, um... So yeah, I thought this was only a model. They live broadcast for, uh, their Blue Origin launches. So, I think I like this image better. Yes, Kat, I know, I hear you. live broadcast for this. Yeah, that is annoying then if they didn't live broadcast for this. Because I would have liked to have co-streamed this. It would have been pretty cool, but apparently we are not worthy. We are not worthy. There we go. That actually works. They say, Vulcan says, they said that they've been designing this blue moon lander for three years. Okay then. I would love to see where this, they want to put people in this? They want to put people in this. So here's the article, which I think I have up on the screen. I do. Um, Jeff Bezos, who heads both Amazon and space company Blue Origin, unveiled on Thursday, which is today, a lunar lander he said would be used to transport equipment and possibly human beings to the south pole of the moon by 2024. This is Blue Moon, he said at a presentation in Washington as curtains lifted to show a mock-up of a huge vessel weighing many tons and able to carry four self-driving rovers. It's an incredible vehicle and will go to the moon, he declared. The vehicle has been under development for the past three years, he said. It will be capable of carrying scientific instruments and also rovers for humans. The goal is to land on the moon's south pole where there is ice. Water can be exploited to produce hydrogen, which in turn could fuel future exploration of the solar system. Bezos did not announce a specific date for
before the project's first launch, but said the lander would be ready in time to make President Donald Trump's announced timeline to return people to the moon by 2024. We can help make that timeline, but only because we started three years ago, he said. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. How long ago did the Lunar X Prize come out? Lunar X Prize. Like, I feel... It was announced two th it was announced in 2007. 2007. And they're just now getting on this train? Cuz 3 years ago would have been mm, 2016. Hey, thanks for the follow. So, Puck, can you speak? Come on, speak. Oh, oh, really? Are you, are you out of enthusiasm? Puck is out of enthusiasm. I apologize. But he does say thank you. And I say thank you. And here's the Cheerios. And make it rain. They're being much quieter than they were earlier today. Um. Yeah. They could have been working on this since 2007. Because they're not, they're probably not even in. They probably aren't even any of the teams. They're not. Astrobotic is. That's the place in Cle or not in Cleveland, in Pittsburgh. Team Indus, the Indian thing, canceled, but India came up with its own lander and rover, so even though it's not a private venture, it's still something that's going to happen. Um, like Rocket Lab was supposed to launch something to the moon for Moon Express, and... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even think, I don't even think, um, Blue Origin was ever, ever a competitor. They were not. Bunny says, Pupper needs recharge. He does. And the cat's screaming for food. So, yeah. Um. I am so annoyed. I'm just annoyed. Because, you know, Back to the Moon for Good has been a thing. And, um, yeah. <sighs> so I'm making a note in my notes that they were not a Lunar X competitor. Or, they were not in that race. And the 20, I, I don't feel like the 2024 is realistic. I just, I don't know. I also don't know enough about the training that astronauts currently go through. I don't doubt that they can do it either. No, it's just they're still doing suborbital flights and they want to do moon landings. I think SpaceX has a better chance of doing a moon landing than Blue Origin right now. 
simply because they're docking with the space station and they're working on human uh, human rated craft but I I don't know Oh, see, and they were founded in 2000. They had enough time to join. Oh my goodness. And they're still planning on doing their first passenger carrying space flight. This year. So when are they going to do it? I can't remember. Do they ever... Um, they had their own project back then? No, the Lunar X Prize is not still running. Um, because there was an... It, the cash prize isn't still running. The, I mean, to compete for the sake of competing is still there. But, um... It ended before Berry Sheet even... Did their thing. But Berry Sheet's like, we're doing it anyways. So... They did give a small amount of money to Space or to Space IL. I say small because it's small in the amount of compared to the entire cost of Berry Sheet. I think their prize was like a million dollars. So if nothing else, it was like a hey, we recognize you did awesome. But yeah, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if SpaceX had a program back then. So there's also this exobiology in a box, which I think, I think we may actually cover this tomorrow too. Um, simply because, you know, it's fun stuff. It's fun stuff. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. I'm skeptical. I am definitely skeptical of the timeline. And just one of those weird things of. Like, y'all could be doing this. This timing is awfully suspicious. But I should. I feel like I should rope that back in. Um, let's see. I have that there. Here's a tag for space exploration, but it won't let me. There it goes. Um, oh wow, there's a whole bunch of stuff under space exploration today. Studying DNA breaks to protect future space travelers. Anchor antenna. The exobiology in a box, which we're totally talking to talking about. And then there's a tissue chip, which we've talked about that before. So this is the problem. I can wind up doing way more things than I have time for. So I think I'll bookmark this tissue chip one and save that for when I do um, Daily Space next Wednesday. Yeah, I'm not entirely too sure how we're going to get somebody to the moon in five years. I just... We don't have U.S. human-rated spacecraft. So... This is pretty, actually, fascinating. Um, so I'm going to bookmark this entire thing, because I'm going to come back to this later. So yeah, there's just so much going on and I'm going to open these up for my own reading later. Okay, so let's see, blue moon makes two, so I guess we'll do, what is that other one? The exobiology in a box, because why not? Why not? So exobiology, that's not what I wanted to do. 
copy image. Exobiology is pretty much um, biology that's not from Earth. So now I need to grab the image credit. OHB, which I don't know what OHB is. But we're going to credit it exactly like that. Oh, OHB. And then set the background to black. Mm, excuse me. Oh, exobiology, study of life in space. So there's apparently a bunch of facilities, external mounted, what they call exposed facilities, on the outside of the station. And they analyze, they normally analyze organic samples. So they've exposed bacteria, seeds, lichen, algae, repeatedly frozen, thawed, vacuum dried, and exposed to radiation for months. Endure temperature swings as they orbited Earth during multiple six month missions. Wow. Um. This is how we know tardigrades can survive. Space, essentially. And then this one will be installed on the outside of the space station. And it has an ultraviolet visible spectrometer, which is actually pretty cool. Um, and will run for 75 days. And, oh, this is just a prototype. Okay then, uh, that was interesting. Yeah, tardigrades. So that's cool, this is, looks like it's just a prototype, but that's still super cool. Um, and yeah. I think that's going to be our last story for tomorrow. Because that will give me plenty to type up and process tomorrow in the morning. So, oh, I need to click done. So, we're going to bump this up here. Copy paste. Puck is adorably sprawled out on the floor, but camera range. I'm like, I, you have this comfy bed, dog. You have this very comfy bed. So, there's that. Um, do that. And I guess find a way to make this look kind of interesting. And... Hmm... Here we go. This is weird. There we go, that's what I wanted it to do. And we're gonna crop this image. Ta-da! And there are our slides for tomorrow. I will fill in all of my speaker notes tomorrow. But the hard part is done, and the hard part is usually just finding stories. And the fact that I have done half of this... You missed a Cheerio puck. I can see a Cheerio clearly on camera. I feel like I need to get Tinker out and get her a blanket or something to nest in. And this song is darker than what I wanted. So yeah, that is everything I really wanted to do, for the most part. Um, saved things for next week, because next week's going to be a bit of a slow thing, and...
and just kind of clearing up everything. I'm bummed that, you know, John and Pat never texted me back. They're probably like, WTF is she talking about? So I think with that, we're gonna wrap it up and I'm going to find somebody to raid. I guess now would be time to suggest somebody. I'm gonna pull up Discord to check, see if anybody is active in TKF. Which, oh my goodness, it looks like Horizon Size is streaming. Where are they streaming? 150 years of transcontinental railroad and some physics and astronomy. Okay then. Um, yeah, it looks like we're going to probably raid Horizon Sci. Because I don't see... Oops, wrong server. I don't see anybody from Cosmic Quest server streaming. So yeah, I think that's who it's going to be. Let me organize my life a little bit better. Um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in to this super random stream. Um, I appreciate all of your patience and everybody keeping me company as I do this. And... If you are new, hi, I'm Annie. Um, you can find our older webcasts on YouTube. You can join our Discord channel, or not our channel. You can join our Discord server and hang out with us. You can follow us on all the social medias. And um, if you give us a follow, which some of you have, you will get, you know, notifications of when we stream. The next stream is going to be tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. Right now, that's 1700 hours UTC. I will, you essentially got the spoiler version of what we're going to cover tomorrow. And on Sunday? There might not be a stream on Sunday because it's Mother's Day. Um, on Monday, for sure, we'll be back with more Daily Space, more Astronomy and Space News, and yeah, same time, same channel! And what else? This is... yeah, okay, I was gonna say, this has definitely been a production of CosmoQuest. Thank you, Paranor! So our host institution is Planetary Science Institute, in Tucson, Arizona, working in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown, Ohio. PSI is a private nonprofit um, 501c3 corporation. So if laws allow where you are, your donations are free. Uh, Blade Runner 2007, uh, Horizon Psy is who we're going to raid. I'm going to have it. I'll plug in in a second. And speaking of donations and tax deductible and things of that nature, um, all of you, you know, we're brought to you by you. So thanks for all of that. Thanks for all of your donations, your subs, your pledges on Patreon, your s bits. Everything, merch purchases, everything. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. It helps me collect a paycheck for doing this. So yeah, thank you. And if you can't afford to do any of that, just give us a follow. Follows are free. Come hang out with us and chat. Nothing wrong with that. And I think that's all the things. Fuck, is that all the things? You're not on camera, so this doesn't work as well. But I think that's all the things. Um, so yeah, thank you for tuning in and have a good evening, night, 
day, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And if you don't have clouds and light pollution, don't forget to look up and be nice to each other. Be kind to each other. Don't, don't be jerks. And with that, I'm going to awkwardly roll the credits as you do. And then we're going to raid Horizon Psy for more science. So yeah, stay tuned for more science and see you tomorrow. Bye.